I don't know if this will actually be a thing or not. It really depends on how much I hate myself, which right now is a lot. So we'll just see how it goes. I recently finished Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, and I just have a lot of things that I want to discuss about it. First of all, what the fuck? Second of all, what the fuck? And that about covers it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Seriously speaking though, this book got so much hype when it first came out. Everybody was just shitting their pants over it. Me personally, I didn't buy into the hype. My pants were pretty dry. But a few months later, my friend started reading it and she had mentioned that it sounded a lot like Avatar. So that changes things. If you guys aren't familiar with Avatar, it is basically the closest thing to perfection that humanity has ever attained, in my opinion and factually speaking. So the main character is Zelly. She is just a salty and resentful bitch. Um, she's just salty about everything, which in retrospect is probably a result of watching your mother die when you were a kid, growing up with years of that emotional trauma, living in a group full of oppressed people that have basically been impoverished and eradicated their whole life to the point where they have no sense of culture or identity. Yeah, her life sucks. So now she's living with her dad and her brother to Zane or or Zane or whatever. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. There's not much to say about his character other than he's emotionally constipated, just like how I sound like I'm constipated when I try to pronounce his name. She also has a mentor named Mama Agba who teaches her how to fight with a staff, which is very fitting because Mama Agba also walks around like she has a stick up her ass. And she has a somewhat peaceful life if you just like ignore all the oppression and poverty and all that kind of, you know, fun stuff. But her journey to restore magic and save the world starts when she runs into a she bumps into her when she's trying to sell fish at a market, and if that's not a uh, lesbian foreshadowing, I don't know what is. Amari is a princess who runs away from her whole family and steals a magic scroll from her dad. Because even though her dad has been killing and enslaving magi for years, she finally decides it's a deal breaker when he does it to somebody that she knows. I mean, girl, you're kind of late, but better late than never, I guess. For the first 200 pages, Zelly is just ready to stab a bitch, and that bitch's name is Amari. It doesn't matter what Amari says or does, she would just be rude as fuck to her. Amari could literally be eating something, and then Zelly would be like, look at that bitch eating crackers. There's this really great part where Amari is saying, my father killed my best friend. And Zelly replies, your best friend or your slave? Do best friends press your clothes and make your food without pay? Dude. You a bitch, but you ain't wrong. <laughs> I just appreciate how Zelly is basically saying that you don't get brownie points just for showing human decency. I respect that, you know, I respect that. And then there is Inan. <sighs> there is just a lot to unpack with that character, but we'll get to that in a second. Inan is the prince and also the brother of Amari. They used to play knife roulette when they were little. It's kind of like this awkward story. If you ask them about it, they get really sad. He is just hell-bent on killing Zelly ever since they first met. And they first met when he actually burned down her village, so... Real meat cute. I love it when a man destroys my livelihood. And ever since then, they start having these dreams or visions where they can communicate with each other. Although really those scenes are just spent with them telling each other how much they hate each other. Like Zelly will pop in and then she'll be like, Hey Inan, you little bitch. Inan will get mad at her and then she'll get mad at him. And then they just continue like this little flirtation ship for the next day and the next day onwards. At this point, I am fucking hyped. I don't care how much you hate each other. If you start dreaming about one another, you're gonna fuck. I am so excited. This book is just checkmarking everything off of my list. You have a girl with magical powers traveling around with her non-magic brother, actually flying around on this big ass like animal sidekick. They meet a character who changes their destiny. They're being chased around by a prince who's torn between fulfilling his duty to his family and country or standing up for what he actually believes in. And they have to complete their quest before the solstice. So a lot of deja vu here, but I am totally in for it. Now I'm gonna dive into some spoilers and just give a little discussion about my good old friend, Inan, because he, he is a piece of work, let me tell you that. If you don't wanna get spoiled, um, I can leave a timestamp in the description so you can jump to the end with my overall thoughts. But let's talk about Inan right now. Where, where, where do I even begin? First of all, what kind of bullshit was that? I think that's like 
the only thing I can really say about him. Like, what is what is wrong with you? <laughs> I really wanted to like him. Like, I truly did. And I wanted to root for their relationship too. I was so excited for their relationship. When they started dreaming about each other, Inan couldn't stop thinking about her and remembering her face. I was like, dude, there is something going on here. And I am here for this. I think the universe listened to my wishes a little bit too hard because then they gave me the relationship right away with no buildup, no development. You turn to the next page and it's like, like it's there with no explanation. That's, that's literally how it happened. They hate each other ever since the beginning of the book. And then there's just one scene in the middle of it where he's just ready to stab Zelly. And then he goes through like 10 seconds of flashbacks through her whole life. And then he's like, you know what? She ain't that bad. I think I'm just gonna throw away everything I've ever learned and just join her side because I had a 10 second epiphany. What's even more preposterous is that Zelly is suddenly DTF with him just because he protects her like one or two times. Are you kidding me? You gave Amari so much shit for like the first 200 pages and she threw away her whole life just to protect the Magi. And I don't see you two making out underneath the waterfall. I'm just saying, I think that's homophobic. I understand that Zelly and Anon are linked together through their magic and so these visions are supposed to give them like a deeper understanding of one another but honestly I just feel like that's a plot device. It's a convenient plot device for them to fall in love without actually setting up you know any interactions or dialogue where they could understand each other. It was just really disappointing to see a relationship that was super rushed when I know it's capable of being better. You put so much effort and care into the world building, why didn't we see that with the main relationship? And it's also really unnecessary, like what was the whole point of them falling in love other than to create drama? It's not so that Zelly can have more empathy about the nuances of the other side of the war because that's what Amari is for. Again, fish market. I also don't think Inan is a good character. I think he's just a very weak character. He's super wishy-washy. He flip-flops between sides and even personalities like all the time. It's true that characters have layers and you know they they can feel many contradicting emotions but to have it all happen within such a short time frame just feels very inconsistent. And I know there's gonna be this whole redemption arc for him because I know he's gonna be alive in the next book, but honestly, the foundation for his redemption arc isn't strong enough for me to wanna root for him or even care. Anytime he literally does anything, people get killed. And then he's like, Oh no, how could this have happened? How could anyone have predicted this? Your dad has been killing magi for years. He literally talks about killing magi all the time. And you didn't expect him to torture Zelly or kill her dad after you basically handed him over on a platter like it was Thanksgiving dinner? Really? Like, are you that stupid? There's a difference between feeling conflicted over your sense of duty to your family and then being a fucking idiot. And that's what Inan was. He's a fucking idiot. He's a coward, he's incompetent, and he's canceled. You can justify this and say that it's a purposeful character flaw. And you know, I would kind of believe that, but it doesn't make him worthy for Zelly. She deserves better. Zelly has been through so much shit in her life. The last thing that she needs is even more bullshit. You know what I mean? Like she needs someone who is kind, who is nurturing, who is a princess, whose name is Amari. I don't know, I'm just naming like general characteristics. For real though, like Amari is the only character worthy of being with Zelly. I didn't care for her in the beginning, but she really fucking came through in the end. She is ride or die. When she comforted Zelly, like during her whole PTSD thing and was like brushing her hair and like comforting her and everything, I was literally tearing up. That is how you develop a relationship from point A to point B. And when she stabbed her dad and told him, don't worry, I'll make a better queen, what the fuck? I was whisper screaming the whole time reading those final chapters because everybody was like getting shanked and killed left and right and Amari just fucking came through to the very end. She has more balls than Inan ever will and I hope they shrivel up when he bleeds out on that island. So basically what I'm trying to say is that Inan's nickname should not be Little Prince. It should be Little Bitch because that's what he is. So all ranting aside, um, despite the major issues that I had with one of the main characters, I actually still gave this book five out of five stars. I was so close to giving it a four though, just because <sighs> Inan was really testing my patience, but 
Overall, it was still a really decent book, and I don't think the issues that I had with it diminish um, the importance of the book because it really is important. It's a book that got published in a genre that is so riddled with white fantasy. You know, like you always see a cast of white characters saving the world and the world is very colorblind. And it's just really amazing to see a fantasy and a fantasy YA of all things have an all black cast with a main character that's like a dark-skinned female. They incorporated colorism in uh, the book, which I don't think is seen a lot in fantasy. So royalty are light-skinned, oppressed and impoverished people are dark-skinned. And again, it just parallels to a lot of the racial dynamics that we have in real life. And I think that's why I actually got, you know, pretty teary-eyed when I was like reading the ending and seeing what was happening because it came from a place that was real. The writing and the description of Zelly's grief and loss were just so tragically and beautifully written. And I really fell for her. And again, it just, it all felt very real to me. I knew where it was coming from because I knew that the author was writing this in a place where we see so many of these things happen on TV. I don't know, man, it's just some real shit. And I appreciate that. The last few chapters were some of the most emotionally and action-packed scenes I had ever read and it was it was fucking crazy. The story is character driven and the female friendship is just fucking fantastic. So yeah, I think the book actually deserves the hype um, and I'm gonna continue reading the rest of the series. Despite the issues I had with this book, I think that the author will probably remedy it in the next book. So I have a lot of faith in the author and I genuinely wanna support her. I think it's a good book. You know I'm still a little bitch though. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a kind of king in the When you go to bed at night, you lay there and you take responsibility for yourself. Because nobody's gonna take responsibility for you.